The sacking of People's Democratic Party lawmakers in Plateau State by the appeal court has been highly criticized by various stakeholders around Nigeria. Supreme Court, in its ruling on the governorship election, where it affirmed Caleb Mufwang as governor of Plateau State, also questioned the decision of the appeal court to sack the lawmakers. Yesterday, the group of ousted legislators made a decision to resume legislative duties. Deducing from the apex court's judgment, the lawmakers claimed that they were only on recess and would resume duties on Tuesday. However, the attempt was thwarted by fierce-looking security personnel who took over the premises of the old government house, Rayfield Joss, where the sitting was to be held. Joining us on the show this morning to shed more light on what went down at the Plata State House of Assembly is Joseph Lange, one of the sacked PDP lawmakers representing Langtang North North. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Mr. Lange, thank you for joining us. Please could you take us through what happened at the Plata State House of Assembly yesterday? whereby we were told 16 PDP lawmakers said, oh, they had completed their recess and they were returning to work, uh, having uh, uh, been uh, declared uh, not validly elected by the Court of Appeal. But the reference is a Supreme Court position uh, referencing what happened uh, with regard to PDP in Plateau State. Now, the decision to go back was it based on advice from lawyers because it looked like it was a resort to self-help. Whereas, you know, the 16 PDP lawmakers, you and your colleagues, could have gone back to the same court of appeal and asked the court to review its earlier decision. But please take us through what exactly happened and what informed the decision to storm the House of Assembly. Thank you. Uh, based on the decision, of the Supreme Court, automatically the, the judgment of the appeal court is a nullity. Because we are on recess, and two judgments came in. One, that the, all the National Assembly and the State Assembly members have been sacked by the appeal court, and the spirit judgment came in from the Supreme Court, which automatically has set aside the judgment of the appeal court, that gave us assurance to go back to the house yesterday. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the second part of the question around um, is that would I not resort to self-help? And are there no other legal ways of challenging what you have um, described as a nullity at the appeal court in terms of the judgment of the appeal court? As I'm speaking to you, I have not received any communication receiving my certificate of return as an elected member representing my people. And based on that reason, I have the right to go back to the house. Even though I approach the court, trying to find a legal proper way in handling the matter. But the proper, way, the proper thing for us to do is to go back to the house. All right, so the proper thing to do is to go back to the house, but the way you guys went about it yesterday was not the right way. There was no legal backing yet. Yes, there was a court judgment, but you had not gone back to the court to go through the process again. To authenticate that, you can't just say, oh, a judgment of the Supreme Court. Yes, it does nullify what the appeal court did see, but the appeal court was the highest ground for the judgment for the parliamentary elections. So when are you guys going to do the right thing? Have you been talking to your lawyers? What are your lawyers saying? I know it's a very, very sensitive situation for you guys, but try to go out there yesterday was not the best move at all. What do you reckon? Uh, well, as I speak to you, just like I said, that even we have applied for the judgment, I have not gotten the judgment I speak to you. So there is nothing that is hindering me from going back to the house. Because we have applied for the judgment. Nobody has served me with the judgment. Nobody has written to me that I'm no more a member representing my people. Because this mandate was given to me by the majority of vote casted. 
at the 2023 uh, general election, and somebody sitting down there will just three, three people will just sit down there and decide to say that I'm no more the member. I have to protect the mandate given to me by my people because they believe in me. Let me tell you, I won this election out of 104 pool units. I won in 98 pool units. And you want to carry the mandate of over thousands of people and give it to somebody, even if they won't pull in it. I, in fact, he, I barely defeated him. He defeated me with three votes in his own pulling. I want to take away the mandate of the majority of people and give it to somebody who they didn't even elect, they, they didn't even vote for him. I think to me it's not proper. We want the judiciary to do something. Yes, we have approached the court. We are waiting for the outcome. But for us, I know that I'm still the member representing my people. Okay. Well, you know, the, the question we've been asking, you are lawmakers. Did you seek the advice of lawyers before you decided to go to the House of Assembly yesterday? And I asked you to tell us exactly what happened, because what has been reported is that you people were, were, were chased away, and that you took to your heels. And I imagine that today, uh, none of the 16 PDP lawmakers would dare go to that uh, House of Assembly. Or are you planning to go tomorrow, or you would rather wait for the outcome of the judicial process you say you have uh, commenced uh, through the law courts. Uh, just give us a sense of exactly what happened. Did you actually take to your heels when the environment became very unfriendly? Uh, the, legal back, uh, the legal battle we have to go back to the House of Assemblies based on the Supreme Court judgment. I don't need any lawyer to advise me. Based on that judgment, I'm still the member. And yesterday, we were in the House of Assembly complex. The speaker also come and address us that for, to him now, he has a coin injunction. So for this reason, the House is not going to sit until further notice. OK, Mr. Langi, obviously, you, you, you seem very adamant about the fact that you would um, yourself, and perhaps also speaking on behalf of the other lawmakers, would act based on the Supreme Court's judgment that was not your case, and you would neglect the one that involved you directly, it would, that not be, would that not result to uh, contempt of court? Are you not concerned about the implications? Would you rather not, as you've mentioned, the Speaker come out to say that he had a court injunction, wait for the, judi you know, the judicial process and do the right thing? Because as has been mentioned, you're lawmakers. You shouldn't be lawbreakers. Whether you agree or not, at least respect the rule of law until it is properly changed, if that is the case, rather than taking matters into your own hands. If your constituents did the same thing, would that not amount to chaos and anarchy? Uh, I think to me, from the judgment of the Apex Court, I think that is the highest court we have on the land. And from their judgment, they said that they, the appeal court did not even have the jurisdiction to entertain this matter. This matter is an abuse of court process. This matter is not even supposed to be in this court. And even the Supreme Court did not even have the jurisdiction to entertain the matter. So in this case, where do you want me to, where do you want me to go? The appeal court did not have the jurisdiction from the apex court. The, the, the judges were even lamenting how many they allowed this matter to get into court. Because this is nomination is a strictly a pre-election matter. And the Court of Appeal go against a constitutional matter. It is bothers me too much. And as the, they are the court of the land, they are supposed to do right, the right thing. And for the Court of Appeal to go against a constitutional matter, that is something, something is wrong with the law. And that is why we are, we, are, we are looking up to the judiciary to do the right thing. Let me tell you, I am a citizen of this country, and I'm a lawmaker. I would like to do the right thing. Let me take you back. After my primary election, somebody challenged my nomination that I'm not qualified to contest because my party did not have a valid structure. He took me to federal high court. I won. He still took me to, uh, to, to appeal court. I have the judgment with me that confirmed that PDP have a valid structure. And I went and I contested my election, and I, I win. I won the election with the majority of vote casted at the election. 
And today, that same Superior Appeal Court is telling me that PDP is in disobedience of court order. If you are in my shoe, what will you do? Even a layman on the street knows the truth. Understand this law. This is a very clear thing. It's a constitutional matter. If you are in my shoe, what will you advise me to do? I know it's a very touchy situation. Now you've thrown the question back to us. But see, I am not in the court. I am not a lawyer. I know nothing about it. But one thing I would advise you to do is you can't build anarchy in the land until the court rules on your matter, which you have a rightful point on, which the Supreme Court has been set upon. Until your lawyers come back to you on it, why don't you stop going to the assembly? Or do you like the way you've been chased around? I'm not saying you don't have a point. If you watch the show, we have constantly berated the system that led to this in the first place. But you and your other 16 others cannot continue to cause anarchy in the land. Are your actions justified? Well, we were there just to ask the judiciary to do the right thing because we are representing our people and we have to stand in for our people. That is why we are there yesterday and the speaker have addressed us. We are waiting for the judiciary to do the right thing. For us to go back and carry out our legislative function. Well, so what's next, uh, Honorable Langi? Because you keep quoting the Supreme Court uh, ruling. Yes, it is true. The Supreme Court uh, more or less said the uh, appeal court erred in law. But the matter before the Supreme Court was a matter between uh, Goshwe and uh, Governor Mutwang. Didn't directly apply because you were not parties. The system PDP lawmakers were not parties to that matter uh, before the uh, Supreme Court. The point we're making is that for you, you cannot benefit from uh, a suit in which you were not uh, a party. Only the court of law can use that as precedent. And the appropriate place to go to will be to this same court of appeal to say in the light of this decision by the Supreme Court, blah, 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 these are our prayers. Now, what is the status of the case that you say you have filed at the court of appeal? Who are the parties to it? What are the prayers, specific prayers, and when was this case filed before the uh, Court of Appeal? Uh, for me, I think like that one is, I will keep that one to my chest for now. But let me ask you one thing. They sentenced me to jail that I committed a crime. And after they later on discovered that I'm not the one who committed that crime. Will I still remain in jail? I don't get your question. We're talking about due this process This is the question here. I'm asking. I no. want Nigerians to answer me. No, we're saying I want that, Nigerians to answer no, me. No, no, we're saying you still follow due process. I mean, if a man is uh, wrongly in prison, uh, the best way to get himself out of prison is to go back to court and establish his... Uh, uh, innocence, or, or to prove, for his lawyers to prove that, uh, you know, the ruling that convicted him was arrived at in error. There's provision for that in law. But you cannot sit at home and decide on the basis of another matter to which you were not a party and seek to benefit from the outcome of that particular case. It's just simple common sense. So that's why I say, what's next? If you say you have filed a case, what are the particulars of that case? What are the prayers? Where? Uh, just like I said, that, that one is, is to my chest for now. I think my lawyer will be in the best position to answer that question because I'm not a lawyer. And that is why we have to obey the, the instruction from the speaker yesterday by, that is why we have to leave the, 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 the promises yesterday. We didn't even argue. There was no, there was no anything. Our uh, people are just there supporting us because they know that we are the members representing them. We are not trying to cause any, any fight or anything. We are waiting for the law. We want the law to tell us what to do. Okay, but uh, Honorable Langley, you will still have to test the law. 
And the best place to test the law is in the uh, courtroom uh, following due process. We would like to thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.